Hi my brothers and sisters, um, I just wanted to come back with another video. Um, I know I've been MIA for a while, but um, it's definitely due to um, just me going through a lot of things these past three months. And this video is um, well past due. I've been promising God that I was going to um, give my testimony about an encounter that happened in my life. And I kept putting it off and putting it off because... Um, you know, just let allow myself to get in the way of it. And um, I'm trying to make this video as short as possible because um, it, it is kind of detailed. And I'm going to just kind of go ahead and jump into it and what led to me deciding to go ahead and do this video. Um, and this kind of started like a few months ago, like three months ago. Um, this past summer, uh, before I took my daughter to, you know, to, see, to be with her father for the summer. Um, I started having really bad heart palpitations and, you know, at this time I was, you know, talking to a guy, um, we had only been talking for maybe like three weeks, but let me tell you how God used that situation and, um, did and, and helped me do like a major detour. And one thing I want to kind of share is that when you belong to God and you know, you, and you're constantly trying to. Um, do what is right. The Lord would not allow anybody to stick to you. Like he would not allow them to be able to cause you any harm. He would, he would shield you. He would protect you because he knows your heart and he knows the direction that you're going. So I just encourage people that when you start to date anybody or talk to somebody, find out everything you know about this person before you start trusting them before you start um, giving them any type of personal information about who you are. You need to find out that if this person says that's who they are, then that's who they are, you know? And so um, moving past that, um, and I, like I said, I give all glory and honor to the Lord for getting me past that situation. And um, it wasn't too shortly after that um, that I had begun experiencing really bad heart palpitations. So like within the last three months, I've been to the hospital maybe like five times. And um, I didn't know what I, I all I know is that I started having um, really bad heart palpitations. And at first, you know, it would just start happening like when I'm about to go to bed. Um, I noticed that I would wake up and sometimes my resting pole rate, which should have been anywhere between 90 and 100, was elevated to like 130, 140. And so after this happened, for maybe like the fifth time, I had became, like the third time I had become depressed. I had start, you know, started gaining weight. I was no longer working out. And you guys, I'm a runner. And it's one of the biggest things that I love to do. Like I praise God and I always give him the glory when I'm on a trail running because running has always been like a passion that I've, I've, that I've had all my life. And so when I couldn't do that anymore and with my health, I felt like my health was declining. I really start to question like, what was it? What was I doing or what was I not doing in my life that was you know, I started to blame myself. I started to think that God was mad at me. I started to think that, you know, um, just crazy things. Like I started to beat myself up a lot and, um, I got depressed and I mean, even though I still, you know, turned to the Lord, prayed, you know, he helped me get through it, but it was, and it was through these last three months that I realized that I needed to do what the Lord needed me to do. Like I had already made this video maybe two times before, but I never posted it because I always was like, you know, I don't want to share that story. And, um, and because it dealt with my heart, I, I, I felt like this was confirmation that the Lord wanted me to go ahead and share my story and, um, the truth in this story. Okay. And so, um, I, as of today, like I'm doing a lot better. Um, I'm no longer having the heart palpitations that I was having. My heart rate is resting and I am able to go and run my life away if I wanted to right now. Um, and that was, that's just a huge blessing because I'm telling you, if you have the gift to do anything that you're good at, use it because that's what the Lord blessed us with, you know? And so, um, and here I am, I'm going to give you, um, my testimony about what happened to me when I died. Um, and I know you're probably thinking like, oh, 
you know, there's another person saying they died and experienced something. I don't know about all those other people. Their stories, some of these people's stories seem very legit to me, but I, I can only speak for myself to tell you that I did die. I was gone. I was out of there. I was a goner. And um, so I'm going to fast forward back to three years ago. And um, by that time, I had been living with my living boyfriend for three years by then. Madly in love, I just thought, like, we were going to work out. Like, we were going to, like, he was going to be my my be all in all. And, you know, and it, it didn't work out like that, unfortunately. But still, even to this day, he's a good person. And I always pray that, you know, the Lord would use him and, you know, be in his life and protect him from people who don't, you know, who could bring him harm. harm. And, um, and so at that time I had a living boyfriend and on that day he was sleeping downstairs in the, in the living room and I was sleeping upstairs in my room and my daughter happened to be in my room that night as well, sleeping in the bed with me. And so, um, there's two doors in my room that leads into my room. There's a door that goes from my hallway into my bedroom. And then there's another door that goes from my bathroom into my room. Now, at this time, I was in church. I mean, I'm still in, I'm, I'm still a, I'm a church, an active church member at my current church. And, um, and I know people out there, you know, don't believe that you have to go to church and all those things. I'm not saying that. You have to, to be a believer in Christ, you know, but I choose to fellowship with my church because we edify each other. We, we go out, we pray for people, we do deliverance, we do a lot of different things. And so I love being a part of my church because I love fellowshipping with um, believers like myself. Okay. And so, and I love, and, and I love my church because we go out and we help so many people and we pray for so many people and we do so much praise and worship that is so powerful and when you see the this the, the power of God move and heal people you don't ever want to come up outside of that type of anointing and so um there was you know there's two doors going into my my bedroom and um I must have um I, I fell asleep and I remember waking up repositioning myself and when I flipped over to reposition myself, I was now laying on my back. And so um, I started taking deep breaths. I was taking really deep breaths. And um, I started to have this feeling like this. <laughs> the only thing way I can describe it is like the feeling of dying. I felt my like I, I just knew I was dying. I knew it. I could my heart. I could feel my heart starting to pain. And I just started to feel as if though my life was leaving my body and I was in the middle of a dying state that had something to do with my heart. And so as I was dying, I was saying, oh, my gosh, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. And no one could hear me. And so as I was dying, I began to feel my soul. Now, the scripture tells us about the inner man, the, the soul that lives forever. It's eternal. It cannot die. And it makes so much more sense now, you know, looking back that when when I was dying, that my eternal soul, the real part of you, because this flesh, this outer appearance, this this shell that we're in, it's it's not I don't to me I feel like it's not real. I know it's real because we're living in it, but it's just it's just a body. It's like a like a suit, you know, like a suit that we're walking around in. It's not, it's not real. It's not, you can't take this body with you. The real thing that's inside of you, your soul, that's eternal. And it's so internal that when I died, I felt more alive than I do now. Like I felt like eternity. I felt that as if, like, as if though I could never die, if that makes any sense. And so, um, as I was dying, I could feel my soul starting to slip out of my body. And I was thinking to myself, like, oh my gosh, where am I going? Where am I going? I'm not ready to die. I'm not ready to die. Where am I about to go? Where am I about to go? And all I know is that I did not want to leave my body. I did not want to go to wherever I was about to go. 
And so I was able to somehow grip my soul. Like I was able to stop it from sliding out of my body. And so now as I'm fighting to stay in my body, there's this thing that runs across my room. Um, from my hallway door, I saw a thing that goes by. Like it went so fast. It went like this, like real fast. And, and so now I'm no longer paying attention to like where my soul is about to go, like where I'm about to go. I'm paying attention to like, what was this thing that just ran into my room? And so, um, as I look at the end of my bed, there's this demonic demon standing at the end of my bed and his head is like pulsating and his eyes, he never takes his eyes off me. His eyes stay fixed upon me, like as if though he's waiting for me, waiting for me to just kind of like let go. And as I'm seeing this, as I'm making out like what this is at the end of my bed, I'm screaming and I'm so terrified. Guys, I'm, I'm terrified. I'm, I'm beyond terrified. Like I'm screaming so loud. Not my door. No, nobody hears me. Nobody hears me. I'm screaming to the, the top of my lungs. And, and as I'm screaming, I'm at the same time, I'm just saying like, oh my God, what is this? What is this? Oh my God, what is this? I'm screaming. I'm terrified. And the next thing I know is I just begin to call on the name of the Lord. And I'm like, Lord Jesus, please save me. Help me. Help me, God. Help me. Help me, Jesus. And, and that's and that's all I did. And so as I started to do that, the thing at the end of my bed began to shift. It began to just fade slowly like that. It began to fade and then it just disappeared. And then after they disappeared, I was able, I was back in my body, like I was back alive, like I was no longer struggling to say like to fight for my life. And um and then after that happened, you know, like I was really messed up. Like I was messed up because I couldn't understand what was going on. I thought maybe, you know, I had some type of dumb spiritual attack you know, in my life that somebody was trying to put something, I don't know. I, at that time, I only had, I had only told one person at my church because I was still kind of like a, like a, a, a baby Christian, I would say, because now, you know, I know about the spiritual realm. I know about, um, the things that's going on in, in the third realm that we can't see, like, you know, with our, with our, um, regular eyes. And so, I speak with one of um, the church elders about it. And at that time, she didn't tell me what I felt like I needed to hear. And, um, you know, and I wrestled with God about it for the last couple of years. And I, you know, and I couldn't understand, like, why he would allow for me to go through what I experienced. Like, why would he allow for me to die like that? And why was that thing allowed to enter into my house and be standing at the end of my bed? waiting for me, you know, and as I, as I continue to look back over that for the, the last few years, I always ask God, like, why did you allow that to happen to me? Like, why would you let that thing be able to come and attack me the way it did? Like, why was it there to begin with? I'm a Christian, you know, I'm a good person. Um, you know, I'm in church. I pray for people, you know, and all these things, you know, I kept telling God and, you know, and it was until like one day he was, you know, I, I, I was ministering and praising the Lord and, and he let me know, you know, that the way I was living my lifestyle was sending me to hell, that the thing that came into my room to collect me was, had every right to be there because of the type of lifestyle that I was living. And, you know, I hear people say all the time, you know, the Lord loves you. He knows your heart. He judged from your heart, you know, things like that. But then you have to ask the question, well, what, what is it that's in your heart? What are the things that your heart loves to do? Yeah, you may be sorrowful for doing the things that you know you're not supposed to be doing. But what is it that your heart, in your heart, are the things that you can't let go or the things that you don't want to sacrifice for the love of Christ? You know, and I always tell myself, like, if I can't see myself doing whatever it is that I'm doing in front of the Lord, then it's not right. You know, 
And so, um, and I just remember, you know, the Lord telling me that because the way I was living my life, I was sending myself to hell because I had knowledge of, of my lifestyle. Like I have, I have, I had knowledge of sin. I knew what was right and wrong. And I still kept compromising my lifestyle to live with my boyfriend and, and have unprotected, I mean, and have, well, um, be transparent, unprotected sex because we both were just, you know, we were just with each other and, you know, fornicating amongst each other. And, um, and cause I, I truly believe that we were going to get married just, and, you know, and I thought like, we was like anybody else, like people, you know, they live together, they do these things and eventually they get married, but some people never do. And so basically you can't continue to live one way and think that God is not going to judge you for it if you die in that sin. And I think a lot of people overlook the fact or a lot of pastors don't talk about you can't be lukewarm. You can't be in the middle. You're going to. And there's a part of scripture that says that your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything else that's apart from that comes from the evil one. So you can't say, yes, I'm a believer of Christ. But then here you are over here doing X, Y, Z watching pornography, committing adultery, lying, murdering, stealing, and think like, oh, you know what, I'm a good person. I only did that one time, like, you know, and then continue to do it over and over and over again. Because when you come into the knowledge of sin, you know you are going to be held accountable, you know. And this thing, you know, that people have to wake up from is that, you know, oh, well, the Lord knows my heart. You know, we have grace. Yes, we have grace to get it right. We have grace to, to turn away, to repent from that sin and not die in that sin, to not stay stuck in a place where we're compromising our very soul. Because guys, I'm going to tell you, one thing I did know was that when, when I was dying, I, I was so alive. Like my soul felt like I, like, I didn't feel like I could die again, if that made sense. Like I felt eternal. I felt more alive than what I do now. And so don't let anybody trick you or fool you into thinking that, oh, the Lord sees, knows your heart. Ask yourself this question. What is it that's in your heart that you know you need to change, that you've been putting off over and over and over again for the sake of pleasing your flesh for the sake of pleasing somebody else what is going on in your heart that you can't let go what are you compromising what are you just sliding over to the side and, and continue to be comfortable with because I'm telling you right now if you die in that very sin your your go-to place is not heaven oh no 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 the same authority that you give that sin to take reign in your life that same authority is going to be there waiting for you when you take your last breath because you gave that thing authority to come into your life. You, you're you saying pretty much it's okay for you to be here in my right life and resonate and be in sin. So when you pass, you you don't know the Lord. You know the Lord, but you, you will be apart from him. Okay? And so in, in, in scripture teaches is about how, how the Lord will hand you over to a reprobated mind. That means... To continue to do a sin over and over and over and over till you believe that it's okay. Till you believe that that very thing that you're doing is okay. And I feel like a lot of people have come up with this watered down gospel that, you know, everything is going to be okay. God knows your heart. He's going to forgive you. Forgive you for what? For sin, Lord, forgive me. And then turn around two, three weeks later and doing the same thing over again. All I'm saying is that don't let someone put you in a situation that you can't that you feel like you can't get out of. If you don't want to be in that relationship anymore and you know it's not um, pleasing God to be in that relationship, get out of it. Or any any other thing. If you're watching porn pornography and you're stuck in that, if you're masturbation masturbating and you're and you feel like you can't get past that, or if you're if you're constantly drinking and you can't get past that and addicted to drugs, like do whatever it takes. Put yourself in the place in the spirit of God. Get yourself in a position where you can get with the Lord and become cleansed. You know, I know a lot of people don't believe in deliverance, but some people actually need deliverance. That's why you still have people who are stuck in depression, who feel like, you know, um, 
they can't take themselves out of a lifestyle that they've been living for so long. But I'm telling you today, that's a lie. And the very thing that I'm speaking about right now, I can testify to you that I pray and I ask God to help me get that man out of my house. And I kid you not, within that day, not even within hours of making that prayer, I had got a call, a, a call from my landlord. And he told me that if I did not part ways with the man I was living with, that we were going to have to part ways. And I, I was no longer going to be able to live in, in my, my house at the time because of all the chaos and the things that was going on outside in the neighborhood. And, um, and I, and I had to choose that day. It was either going to be me and my child, you know, without nowhere to stay or this relationship that was going nowhere fast. And so I made a choice that day, but at the same time, I was very grateful. And I'm telling you guys, I got on my knees and I cried and I told the Lord that I would never make that same mistake of putting myself in a relationship where the man does not love the Lord or has no intentions of ever committing himself to me and in marriage or anything like that, because we're selling ourselves shorts when we get with people and think that, you know, they could bring us some type of happiness, you know, by making false promises and not, you know, fulfilling those things. And so I just encourage people out there that if you're feeling like you're in a situation that you can't get out of, don't believe the hype. Like, Pray to God. He will deliver you from that thing. He will open doorways. He will cause certain things to happen. So that way, even if, if you can't do it by yourself, he's going to help you to do it. And you know, it may not feel nice when he do it, but he's going to allow you to be able to make that exit or turn away from that sin and close that door. Because I'm telling you right now, due to the fact that I can, with my heart palpitations, I learned that I can no longer do the things that I used to enjoy. And like I said, I like to be transparent with people because I can't sit here and say one thing as if though as if like I'm this perfect person because no one is. But the Lord does challenges us to to strive for perfection, to be better, to turn away from sin. And that's going to be forever going. And I just want people to know that when you leave this body, you go in one or two places, you either going to heaven or you going to hell. And in and, and scripture also says that. When the white throne judgment takes place, he is going to take that current hell and throw hell inside of the lake of fire and it's going to burn eternally. And the fact that I know that when my, when I died, my soul felt eternal. You're, there's no end. Like when we take our last breath and we leave this body suit, there's no end. Like you're going to be alive. You're going to, wherever you go, you're going to be alive. You're going to feel, you're going to be able to smell, you're going to be able to. You're going to have your same mind. You're going to know you're not going to, it's not going to be like a white memory. You're going to know. And so, um, I just want people to kind of wake up, you know, come up out of this sleep state that we're in, come up out of social media, come up out of everything that's telling you, um, you know, I feel like a lot of us is living like a, like in this fantasy mindset. And I, and I blame a lot of it on, on the things that we see on social media and things like that. And I just want to share something with you guys because I was reading it, um, some scripture the other day. And I came across this and it was exactly what I needed to hear because a lot of times we put ourselves in this mind state where we kind of fantasize about things that we would like to happen or that we want to happen. And when we do that, we take on sin that shouldn't be in our lives, you know? And so... <laughs> It was a part of scripture that says, I cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So um, I encourage you to go to that scripture. And um, I do apologize because I don't have it, but I'm, that's a very pretty well-known scripture, casting down imaginations that exalt itself against um, the knowledge of God, because in our minds, we tend to um, fantasize and, and, and do things. And how many times do we do those things? And then when we do the very thing, it wasn't exactly the way we played it out in our mind or the way we thought it was going to transpire. And there, then there we go. We have the enemy setting us up for what we think will be something great. But yet it only leads to more um, 
down to more downfalls, to more struggles, to more pain, and to more um, trials and and things that we have to redo just so that way we can get over that that next hump in our lives. So I just encourage anyone out there who's watching this video to you know reconsider some things that you're doing in your life and um and and go get prayer um from anybody that you know who who that you trust to be to pray over you and if sometimes if you can't have somebody pray for you pray for yourself nine times out of ten i pray for myself because that's where i get my deliverance from i go into praise and worship and i pray and i worship with the lord until he delivers me from that thing that i need to be delivered from or if i need my soul to be cleansed and um i thank you for tuning in and um listening to my testimony and i pray that it blesses someone on today or this evening and um i'll be speaking with you guys again thank you